in order to determine the time at which the velocity of this particle is equal to zero, we're going to start with the position function and transform it into a velocity function. Now we know that the velocity of the particle will equal the derivative of the position function with respect to time. So we symbolize that by v equals dx dt. So basically we're just going to take the derivative of this function here and that will transform it into velocity. So the derivative of 20t would be 20 minus the derivative of 5t cubed. For that you'll use the power rule, so you multiply the power by the coefficient to make 15 and then t cubed becomes t squared, of course, because you have to subtract 1 from the exponent when obeying the power rule. So now we simply note that the velocity has to equal 0, so we're going to set the velocity equal to 0, and then we're going to solve for t. And to do that, we can add 15t squared to both sides of this equation. These cancel out on the right-hand side, so now we have 15t squared equals 20. We can then divide both sides by 15. 15s cancel. Now we have t squared is equal to 20 over 15. And then finally, to solve for t, we can take the square root on both sides. So t will equal the square root of 20 fifteenths, and if you put that into a calculator, you will get about 1.15 seconds. So this would be the correct answer for part A. In part B, we are asked for a time at which the acceleration is zero. And this is a similar procedure, except the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function with respect to time. And let's recall that our velocity function was 20 minus 15 t squared. So why don't we write that down here? And then we'll go ahead and differentiate it. So acceleration will equal the derivative of 20 is 0. And then the power rule applies again. So multiply the power by the coefficient to give you 30. And now you have t raised to the power of 1. This can be simplified to just negative 30t. And since we want the acceleration to equal 0, we will set it equal to 0. And then we'll solve for t by simply dividing both sides by negative 30, which cancels out on the left side. And we can see that t would equal 0. So the acceleration of the particle is 0 when the time is 0. So this would be the correct answer to part b of the question. And then we have parts c and d. They want the time range for which the acceleration is negative and then positive. Well, we can obtain that time range perhaps by sketching a graph of the acceleration function. So we'll put acceleration on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. The equation that we're graphing, again, is a is equal to negative 30t. So that's just a straight line with a negative slope, and it has a y-intercept, or in this case an a-intercept, of 0. You can imagine this as being plus 0 here. So you would plot that a-intercept first. You have a negative slope, and it's a straight line, so basically you can make a rough sketch that looks something like this. And we can see that for this region of the curve, the acceleration is positive. So we know that a would be greater than zero, aka positive, when the time was less than zero. And then for the region highlighted here, we can see the acceleration values are negative. So then we can say the acceleration would be less than zero, or negative, when time is greater than zero. And so for part C, we wanted the time range for which A is negative. So this would actually be the correct answer right here for part C. And then for part D, we wanted when the acceleration is positive, And that would be when the times are less than zero. That's a bit of a strange result, isn't it? Because time really can't be less than zero. But I suppose that matches what the question is asking for.